Good morning, and welcome to the seventh and last Sunday in Easter. A few announcements before we begin our service. Just a reminder that the office is still closed, but can be reached via telephone. Uh, if you have any needs or wants, just give them a call. And don't forget to join us for our virtual half hour coffee hour via our website. Just go on our website and click on the happy hour, or not the happy hour, click on the virtual coffee hour and join us for a celebration of coffee after the service. The food pantry continues to do a land office business and I keep Debbie and all her crew in your prayers. And we're looking to reconstitute the, uh, uh, the garden. So if you're interested in helping us grow once this, once this pandemic and we're released to go about our business, please call Elizabeth Bates and volunteer your time to help us. And now, let's join Joyce Prescott in the children's ministry time on the subject of trust. Good morning, boys and girls. I'm so happy to be back with you again today. And I had a little feedback from our um, talk last week about Ella, the crayon kid. And some of you asked how you could help donate crayons. So with a little help from my friends and the internet, we have some information for you. Ella has a Facebook account called Help Color Me a Rainbow at The Rainbow Girl. She also has an address and a phone number. So you can check out whether or not this is something you want to do. Just ask your parents. And it's also in the bulletin under the family ministry section. So this week your story is about Peter and walking on the water when Jesus invited him to come to him. That takes a lot of trust. I am not sure I would be able to do that. Now, I would worry about whether or not I could do it. So I put some oil right from my kitchen in this glass, and the oil is going to represent worry. What does it mean to worry? I think worry is when we're afraid or concerned because we are not knowing what's going to happen to us. I've also put some water with some blue food coloring in this glass, and this is going to represent trust. This represents trusting God like Peter trusted Jesus when he stepped out into the water. What does it mean to trust God? Trusting God means that we remember that he's in control and he will take care of everything because he knows everything. We don't need to be afraid because God is taking care of us. Does God want us to worry or to trust in him? Can we trust God and worry at the same time? Well, we're going to do a little experiment. We're going to mix our worry and our trust in him to give us the answer. Can they blend and happen at the same time? Look at that. From looking at our demonstration, can worry and trust be mixed together and happen at the same time? No. Our hearts cannot be trusting God and worrying at the same time. The two just don't mix. And I think that might be something that Peter learned when he took his eyes off Jesus and started to sink. That's what happens when we get filled with worry. Now God wants us to trust in him whenever we're tempted to worry, because he cares for us. He's in control, and he knows about everything that's happened in the past, and he knows about everything that's happening right now, and he will always know what's happening in the future. When you start to worry, remember, Jesus will be there. You can put your trust in him. Amen, amen. hymn this morning, I'll Hail the Power of Jesus' Name, hymn number 450, verses 1, 5, and 6.
And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. But ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witness unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the utmost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly towards heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Then returned they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem a Sabbath day journey. And when they were come in, they went up into an upper room, where abode both Peter and James and John and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon, Salates, and Judas, the brother of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with their brother. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our gospel hymn, number 603, When Christ Was Lifted, verses 1, 2, and 4. For them which thou hast given me, for they 
are thine. And all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these in the world, and I come to thee. Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. The Lord of God. Thanks be to God. May the words from my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning, all. I miss you guys. I really do. I mean, I miss all your smiling faces, all your hugs and warm embraces, all your laughter and chatter all your worries and cares that matter. I miss the sound of your happy voice rising in songs and hymns that rejoice. But most of all, I miss being together in prayer. And I miss the bread and the wine that we share. I really miss it, and I miss you all. So, is this it? Is this the end of the world as we know it. <laughs> I mean, where do we go from here? Was the prophet Isaiah right when he said, For I am about to create new heavens and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come to mind. Or what about John when he wrote Revelation and said, As the one who is seated on the throne said, See, I am making everything new. Now, is silver lining searching wrong during such a horrific time as this pandemic? I don't, I don't think so. I believe that it is in our DNA to look for the silver lining in an otherwise very dark time for the entire world. And particularly, it is in our Christian DNA and our faith. Our faith is founded on, from the very beginning, that God, through His Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, is working in us for the good of His creation. I think we can all agree with the majority of the world's population sheltering in place over the past three months. The earth has become a much healthier place for all of God's creatures to live and move and have their being. Any number of people have expressed to me that stay safe, stay home, has more or less forced them to reevaluate how they purposely use their newfound Sabbath time. A time for prayer, a time for reflection and meditation, a time for reading. Our faith in God's overarching goodness, even during the worst of times, is exactly why St. Paul could write to the Romans, we know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to His purpose. And just what is God's purpose? Well, in our Gospel lesson this morning, we heard about half of John chapter 17, the final chapter that comes at the conclusion of the first three chapters, the so-called final discourse of Jesus that He had with His disciples on the night of His arrest. The entirety of chapter 17 is Jesus' prayer to his Heavenly Father, and has come to be known as the Priestly Prayer. And I invite you to read the entire chapter as you shelter in place this afternoon. Now, while it may strike you as a petitionary prayer, Jesus asking to be glorified by the Father and asking for the protection of his disciples after he returns to the Father. But I think of it as more a prayer of a testament to his faith, to his belief that he completed the work he was sent to do. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. You know, in Greek, which is, of course, the language of John's Gospel, there is only one word for both 
faith, and belief. The word is pistis. And our friend and theologian Robert Kaiser tells us in his book, John the Man of the Gospel, he says, the author of the gospel never uses the noun faith or belief, but always and only the verb to believe. Belief is always an active matter. Faith is not an inner disposition. Faith is not something one has. Faith is something one does or has done for you. Faith is not a state of being, but a dynamic becoming. Faith as a verb means that believing is the decision made once, only to have it made over and over again. Faith is that personal relationship. In Jesus, in his priestly prayer to the Father, or as our theologian Raymond Brown calls it, a prayer of union and communion of the Father and the Son. Jesus says that his disciples know everything that has been given to them from Jesus, that has come from the Father. They received it because they know he comes from the Father. And they believe that the Father sent him. Their belief will manifest itself in their actions in the unbelieving world. And Jesus is asking for their protection on their behalf. Not on behalf of the world, but on behalf of the disciples that the Father gave him. You see, Jesus is not only praying for the disciples that are there with him, but for all future disciples that are to come. And he's asking the Father to make the disciples then and now, to make them one, just as he and the Father are one. He is praying for oneness with his little motley crew of disciples and oneness in his disciples, the church, in the future. So how is our faith, our belief, manifesting itself in oneness of our actions during this pandemic. How is faith a verb, not a noun? How can we demonstrate our oneness with each other and on this very unusual time, a very different time, when we often feel rudderless and without direction, alone and abandoned, with all our moorings and anchors drifting away? Well, I think we need to take some of our everyday practices and turn them into a kind of sacramental ritual that celebrates our oneness with each other and our oneness with our Heavenly Father. And in that vein, let me close with a reflective prayer from Nadia Bowles Weber, a Lutheran pastor in the Evangelical Lutheran Church of America, and quite a dynamic preacher and blogger. Pastor Weber prays, I do not know when we can gather again and worship the Lord. So for now I just ask that when I sing along in my kitchen to each song on Stevie Wonder's Song in the Key of Life album, that it be counted as praise. And that when I read the news and my heart tightens in my chest, it be counted as Kyrie. And that when my eyes brighten in the smile behind my mask as I thank the cashier, may it be counted as passing the peace. And that when I water my plants and wash my dishes and take a shower, may it be counted as remembering my baptism. And that when tears come and my shoulders shake and my breathing falters, may it be counted as prayer. And that when I stumble upon a Tabitha Brown video and hear her grace and love for you, may it be counted as hearing a homily. And that as I sit at my table in my apartment and eat one more homemade meal, slowly, joyfully, with nothing else demanding my time and attention, may it be counted as communion. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us join together on an affirmation of faith found on page 2. Jesus Christ who in the form of God, did not exploit equality with God, but emptied himself in the form of a slave, born in human life, and being found in human form, humbled himself, and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. 
Therefore God also exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Let us pray to God, Lord of the Church and of the world. We pray for the people of your Church, those you have called to hear and believe your word. Draw them together in unity, inspired by the mutual love of the Father and the Son, to be as one in faith and hope and love. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the people of the world that Christ came to save, those who acknowledge his power and those who do not know him, we ask that his glory may shine upon them and then his own. As he has authority over all, may those who exercise power learn the way of his justice and his mercy. Lord, hear our prayer. Protect those whom you have given us in love to be our families and friends. Guide them with the grace promised to all who are your own and help us to spread by word and example the knowledge of your glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Come tenderly to those who have heard and sought to follow, have fallen away, and lost the vision they once they knew. Bring them back in the way that leads to eternal life. Have mercy on the sick, grant them healing, and renewal of life. Lord, hear our prayer. We remember those who in this world began their eternal life through faith and have entered into fullness. As they are now in your presence, so may we grow in grace towards that vision of glory. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray in the name of Christ, glorified before all. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, in heaven hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on the earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Our collect of the day, let's pray. O oh God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. A collect for COVID-19. God of all creation, whose people prepared a tabernacle for you and carried it with them through the wilderness, so they would never be alone. If we must venture into a landscape transformed by crisis, may we be living vessels of your mercy, grace, and love. Remind us to carry our treasure gingerly with a respectful for cupids between ourselves and all the other tabernacles. Make of us big cons of friendliness, patience, and forgiveness in parking lots and the marketplace. May we be balm for the sick, isolated, and overlooked, and a bitter pill for those in power who do not promote what is best for all your people. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Jesus, our friend and our redeemer, 
On the first Easter day, you stood among your disciples as the conqueror of sin and death and spoke to them of your peace. Come to us in your risen power and make us glad with your presence. And so breathe your Holy Spirit into our hearts that we may be strong to serve you for the glory of your great name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, give us courage to hope and risk disappointment. Teach us to pray expectantly and when our prayers seem to fail, bring us to pray again and again for you, our God, who acts and will act again. Amen. Grant us, Lord, not to be anxious about earthly things, but to love things heavenly. And even now, while we are placed among things that are passing away, to hold fast to those that shall endure through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Loving God, you have ordered this wondrous world, and you know all things in earth and heaven. So fill our hearts with hope in your promises that by day and by night, at all times and in all seasons, may without fear commit those who are dear to us to your never failing love for this life and the life to come through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 As please, as we offer prayers of thanksgiving, petitions or intercession may be shared at this time. Saint Chrysostom, Almighty God, you have, have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our own justification to you, and you have promised to you the whole world that two or three are gathered together in His name, you will be the minister of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions and the that are for us. Granting us in this world knowledge of truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will working in you that is which well pleasing in his sight and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn, hymn number 460, Alleluia, sing to Jesus, verses 1 and 7. So 
to fill our hearts with faith. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia. 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 Alleluia.